So it has to be a card, then a dot. I don't see it. Don't see it. Never happened! Good, good piece of advice! Would you like a Todd there? Make it happen! I'll deal with the consequences. Paper, and you just told me that each got how much paper? Half the 
Oh, plus one. If I add one to both sides. Three twos. Three twos. So that's a really interesting question. When is the algebra speaking truth in arithmetic? This paper tearing suggests maybe this is fine for a number like a third. This seems very perturbing to us for a number like two. Great segue into this discussion when we actually figure out when these things make sense. All right. Daddy. <laughs> Am I still going? All right. So let me take you guys to the world of open research. This, we've got started kindergarten today. Let's keep going. Are you ready for it? All right. And Raj, how much time do I have? Someone? Yes, you saw the joys of being a mathematician is that you get to play. Who doesn't love to play? We all have our inner children that love to play. So what I'm going to do now is keep playing. So I did a 2-1 machine, I did a 3-1 machine, I did a 4-1 machine, 10-1 machine. Let's start getting quirky with the numbers. What if I did, so I did 2-1, I did 2-1 and so on, what if I go very low? What if I did a 1-1 one, one machine? My only question is, is it interesting? Yeah. It's a very subjective question, so <laughs> Yeah, what happens? Put in one dot, shoo! Boom! Dot! Bam! Dot! 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 It's hard to tame, so I'm not sure what's going on in the one dot. Right. Well, the way you measure the numbers this way, it's doing big to small, but it's small to big. Is that interesting or not interesting? That's my only question. Put in one dot. Boom! 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 Boom. Oh, off infinity again. All the straps are going out. Very hard to tank. Alright. Well, if I did something, I don't know, mixing up like this, something between threesness and twoness or something, a three two machine, is that interesting? Don't know. Is it tame? Can I put dots in it? Yeah. Right. One dot. Zoom. Says one. Two dots. Zoom. Says two. Three dots. Yes. Three dots. Pow! Dot. Dot. Three becomes two. Is that right? Two zero. Four. Two one five. Two two. I have a feeling a sixth dot is going to be particularly exciting. <laughs> What's going to be? Three zero zero. Two zero zero. Zero two zero two. Two one two two zero two. Two oh, two plus the two zero. Do what? Let's do it. So here comes the sixth dot. Shoom. Boom. Boom. Dot dot. Oh, right. Pow. Dot dot. Two one zero. Thirteen. Thirteen. We'll have an answer. Oh, oh, okay. So let's see, let's see. We've got two approaches. Let me do the, like, the straightforward approach first. Let me just literally put in 13 dots and see what the answer actually is. So here they are. Earth, earth, what? Cut this out. Okay, 13. How many explosions? Right, kaboom! Dot, dot. Kabow! Dot, dot. Kthwack! Dot, dot. Flip! Dot, dot. And one left over, yep? Yeah? Two explosions. Kashing! <laughs> dot dot. Kashoop! Dot dot. Because legal! Dot dot. <laughs> 13 years. 2 1. 2 1. 
that this fellow is saying, even though we don't know what this, this machine is, maybe we can do arithmetic in it. For example, in ordinary phase 10, what's 6 plus 6 plus 1? 13. But 6 is 2, 1, 0 over here, plus a 2, 1, 0 again, plus a 1. Can we do arithmetic in this? Let's go left to right. What's 2 plus 2? 1 plus 1. 0 plus 0 plus 1. What's going to happen to that 4? 3 explode. 1 behind. 2 knots. Is that the code for 13? Wow. So now, well, okay. But now the system is, we seem to be able to do arithmetic of this thing. But what is that thing? What is it? Is it basis? <laughs> okay. Welcome to the base one and a half. This is actually base one and a half. Um, I'm giving it away just because we're now here in a long session, little space. But it's true. Dots here are worth one, that's how I've always set the game up. Three of these make two of those. Let's check. Is three ones the same as two one and a half? Yeah. Yeah? Three of these make two of those. Now, this base one and a half, what fraction of these goes here? What fraction goes here? Nine fourths. Check. Is three three halves, that's nine twos, the same as two nine fourths? Nine twos. Welcome to base one and a half. Number 16. <coughs> and here's, here's the thing. As a human being looking at this, I don't believe it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, look at these ghastly fractions. One, three, two, nine, four, three, seven, eight, and so on. Horrible fractions. And you're telling me this combination of those ghastly fractions works out to be a perfect whole number on the nose. My intuition says that, that is going to be extraordinarily unlikely. So can we just please my intuition right now and check? Is it truly true that two, was it, two twenty-seven eighths? Is that the first one? Yeah. yeah. Is two twenty-seven eighths and one nine-four and two three twos and one one? Is that actually thirteen on the nose? It is. It actually is 13 on the nose. It astounds me that every counting number can be written as a combination of those ghastly fractions with a coefficient 0, 1, or 2. Welcome to a version of base 1 and a half. Optional homework. Take your current school textbook and convert all the forms in there into base 1 and a half. <laughs> you can do it. Here's the thing. Mathematicians to this day still have many unsolved questions about trace one half. We do not understand the mechanics of the powers of three halves. Many unsolved questions about this machine. For example, you'll notice after a while that all the numbers begin with a two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right, so that makes sense because if you get to the next digit over, it has one explosion, has three becomes two. So the left digit has to be two once we've got past the initial start. Okay. After a while, you might start to notice that all the answers seem to start beginning with 2, 1. Good. You need to ask yourself, does that make sense? Or maybe it's false. And you start to notice all other patterns. And you wonder, do they really hold? Or do they just false patterns? Yeah? I Do you know what? And then you are being beautiful mathematicians. Thank you. Because then play with this, but like keep playing. We're going to do things like this. Welcome to base negative one and a half. You can try to do things get I in there. Or you might want to do make it two dimensional. Do one row for real parts, one row for the I parts. Or you might literally want to go two dimensional. I have some students, young kids, ages seven and thirteen, that actually did a little video on this, but they said, hang on, let's do the 3-2 machine this way. They did a two-dimensional grid. 
They did a two one machine this way, they did a three one machine this way, and they realized if you go on strange diagonals in that grid, you got all the other, you got a three two machine. They have a whole two dimensional world of these machines. And why stay two dimensions? Hours of play, hours of joy, hours of delight. All I have done here, and I will not take credit for this, all this is is just thinking about the very beginning of mathematics case study. What we humans naturally do. Mankind has built this thing called an abacus to be around for millennia. What are they? Ten beads on a rod. When you slide ten beads up on one rod, push them back down, slide the next bead rod one or over. That's the ten one machine. This is very natural and human. This is what we humans have done for millennia. This is the joyous story of mathematics. Let's bring it to the world. Let's that story come back. This is just returning the human joy of mathematics, thinking deeply about simple ideas and playing. And look how far you can go with just playing. So thank you for your time to go on my